What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and I'm here to talk to you about ultrasound today. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe so you can be a part of the family. We are growing and I am so excited. You guys are literally the best people ever for sticking around, watching my videos, and pushing those thumbs up buttons to help us out. So thank you so much for checking out my videos and the YouTube algorithm greatly appreciates it. So let's get started in today's video. You have already decided that you want to be an ultrasound tech. You've done your research about the job, you've volunteered or you shadowed somebody, you've watched my other videos, and you've came to work with me and now you're at the point where you have decided that you want to become an ultrasound tech you want to go into the field and you don't know where to start or how to become one so today i have five steps on how you can become a sonographer starting with step number one research what type of ultrasound technologist that you want to be make sure that you check out all the job requirements what kind of exams you will have to do what the type of shifts and hours are for that kind of technologist and the type of patients that you're going to scan there are two different routes that you can pretty much do one is echo and vascular where you do the heart and arterials venuses and other vascular stuff. I'm not an echo tech. I do not know much about echo, but all I know is that you scan the heart and some places you also do vascular. With this one, you can pretty much work in an outpatient setting at a lot of cardiovascular offices or at diagnostic imaging places. There are also echo techs in hospitals and some of those hospitals just focus on echo only because there will most likely be a general ultrasound department in that hospital as well. For example, my hospital we have an echo department and then we have the general ultrasound department and then you can also choose general ultrasound which includes exams like abdomen renal pelvics vascular arterials we also do musculoskeletal soft tissue testicular ultrasounds and transvaginal ultrasounds those are exactly what they sound like now you have to think about, are you leaning towards doing adults only? Do you want to also have the opportunity to scan pediatrics? Because then you can have a choice of looking at pediatric hospitals, see what they offer, if they offer fetal echocardiograms, or if they offer general pediatric ultrasound, you can also do that. I work in a hospital that does everything. So we have pediatric floors like NICU, PICU. We also have a labor and delivery. So we'll scan pregnant women. We also scan their babies after they're born if they need an ultrasound. We also have a burn unit, ICU, trauma. We have an adult ER and a pediatric ER. So you can only imagine how much we scan at my hospital. We have a huge hospital and we do a lot of different ultrasounds. So I am a general sonographer. Where I work, we scan it all. You name it, we scan it. So after you're done with researching step number one, figuring out what kind of ultrasound tech you want to be, step number two, research schools that have your said path program. If you choose echovascular, make sure that the school that you go to has that program. If you choose general, make sure the school that you go to has that program. Most have both. But for my school, we only had general. There's another school in the city that teaches echo and vascular. You wanna make sure that the program you go to is accredited and you wanna make sure that you find out the history of the school and make sure that it is credible and that other people have also graduated from this program. Every program is different, so make sure you pick the correct one for the specific path that you want to go down. Maybe see if you can find somebody who has attended that program. Maybe they can give you some advice. Technology these days, is a really great resource to find other people who are currently in the field that can help you decide if it's something that you really want to do. When I started, it wasn't really that big on YouTube or Instagram. So just think about it. There are a lot of Instagram influencers that do ultrasound. If you just search RDMS or RVT or RDCS, a lot of them will pop up on your feed. There are lots of sonography groups on Facebook where people 
are currently working and there are also groups that have students in it so kind of just find somewhere where you can connect with someone and get more of your questions answered even youtube other sonographers that is why you're here right you're here to find out some more answers i'm proud of you for looking up how to become an ultrasound tech because it is a tough journey you should know what you're getting yourself into so there are a few other sonographers that i actually watch myself i'm going to put their links in my description below so you can go ahead and show them some support and love we are an ultrasound community and we have to be there for each other this job is hard some people that you should check out are tessa's life she does some come to work with me youtube videos she works in an outpatient setting I've got this times two. She answers a lot of your guys' questions. Sano Mom, she's got a whole group of followers and she calls them Sono Gang. So go ahead and check her out. She also has some videos of what you should expect in clinical. Jamie Lynn, she posts videos about her life and she answers a lot of sonography questions. And Chrissy Lee, she is in maternal fetal medicine. So that's really cool. She does like high risk OB. She can probably answer way better than I can about OB GYN, high risk OB because I mean I do have labor and delivery pregnancy exams at my hospital but I don't go to the extent that she would do inside a high risk OB outpatient place. Go ahead check out their channels hopefully they can help you out with some more specific questions that you guys have. A lot of them do specialize echo vascular OB GYN and they work in outpatient places versus me who works in a hospital and does general ultrasound. Number three, a attend that school. Yep, you gotta go to school. Apply to that school and get into that school. Do your prerequisites. If you need help, ask a counselor. They are more than welcome to give you probably a sheet that shows you what classes that you need to take to get into the ultrasound program. Once you get all that done, make sure you pass your classes with good grades. Take those anatomy and physiology classes, take those physics classes, make sure you understand concepts, and know you are going to have to take a math class. However, math is not used a lot in ultrasound on the daily, but do know that you need to take math. We always get that question for some reason. Math is just a prerequisite for most majors anyway. In daily ultrasound, we don't really use math. We kind of just like have to convert from centimeters to millimeters. ABIs are usually done on your machine or you can just kind of use a calculator honestly where I work no math is really involved once you get into that school number four apply for the program you don't kind of just get into the ultrasound program you have to apply to it now these programs are usually very competitive and what I've seen is that they take maybe 10 to 15 people a year so just know that it is a competitive field but that is only because there aren't enough clinical sites to take you guys in to practice ultrasound because you need to practice ultrasound in a clinical to get all the skills that you can. You don't just learn ultrasound by reading books, you know, you learn ultrasound by scanning. Scanning normal people and then going into the field and scanning abnormal people. When you apply for this program, you're going to have specialized classes so like abdomen, OBGYN, or your echo classes, fetal echo. You have to learn how to do vascular. They're gonna basically give you all the information on what you're gonna scan, how to scan it, what you can expect from scanning and learning all the different pathologies that you'll see in the field. Some places are gonna have sectional anatomy, radiation sciences. So it just depends on which program you get into the types of classes that you're going to take. With the program, you usually have a lab, and in this lab, you're going to be scanning each other, your classmates, your teacher, and they're going to be working with you on how to remember a protocol, and these protocols are what you do on the daily when you scan. It's not like you're just scanning at random, like, I'm just gonna scan the kidney, or I'm just gonna scan the liver. Like, there's an actual set protocol that you should use to get your pictures for the doctor. In lab, you want to scan as much as you can. Scan your classmates and and you're gonna be able to see everything all nice and pretty on the screen. But when you go into clinical, it's gonna be way more difficult than that. 
Memorize what normal looks like. Scan that pancreas. See that pancreas a thousand times because honestly the pancreas is like really hard to see most of the time. Do the best you can in your program. Help each other out. Watch YouTube videos. Do everything that you can to enhance studying and to memorize everything that you can so that when you go into the field, it makes scanning 10 times easier. Once you finish your lab hours, you go to clinicals and your lab is obviously going to be open for you to practice scanning. But when you go to clinicals, that's where you're going to learn a bulk of your scanning skills. You're going to learn how to scan people with large body habitus. You're going to learn how to scan people who are in pain. You're going to watch these sonographers, probably stand behind them and see how they talk to patients, how they do bedside care and learn about bedside manners. You have to learn about the process of introducing yourself to patients and making sure that you're doing the correct exam on the correct patient with the correct clinical history. All of the stuff, you get a glimpse of it in lab and in classes, but it all comes together when you go to clinical or your externship. Each school has hourly requirements. For example, my school's requirement was 1680 hours, so 1680 hours. I was in clinical from June to May, and I was there five days a week. I was way over the hours, but I didn't mind that because I was able to scan so much and learn a lot from my clinical. You're gonna have all these hours to make mistakes, but try not to make mistakes. But I'm just saying, you're going to make mistakes. Learn from those mistakes because when you become a real tech, you shouldn't be making any mistakes, to be honest. Every day is a learning experience in ultrasound. Don't be afraid to ask questions continually. Learn every single day because there are things that you have never seen before. There are things that 20 years, 30 or 40 year techs have never seen before and they see it all of a sudden. And they're just like, what the heck am I looking at? Do the best you can in lab, do the best you can in clinicals, everything will come together. The more you scan, the more experience you get, that's how you're going to learn and that's how you're going to become a great ultrasound tech. So the ultrasound program is where you're going to learn everything you need to know from classes to lab to clinical slash externship. Once you get through all of that, which by golly gee, it's going to feel like a long time. It's going to feel really hard, but we all get through it. Once you get through all of that, then you graduate. Yay! Yay! Once you graduate, you get that degree or that certification and then boom, you're an ultrasound tech. Just kidding. Not yet. Step number five is going to be sit in for your board exams. Yes, I said it board exams. You have to take an SPI exam, which is sonography principles and instrumentation. And that is going to give you the opportunity to take other specialty board exams like abdomen, OBGYN, vascular, fetal echocardiogram, echocardiogram, musculoskeletal, all these types of specialty board exams. But the one that's most important is your SPI exam. And you want to take that after you graduate. Some places you can take that while you're in the clinical, while you're in the ultrasound program. Some people take it after they take their ultrasound physics class because it's in your head and fresh and you just might as well go ahead and take it. But just know that you're going to have to pay at least $300 or more to take these specialty board exams. If you are currently at that step, you go to ARDMS.org and they will have all the information for you on how you can sit in for the tests, what prerequisites are needed for you to take that exam, and when you can apply for taking the exam and when you can sit in for that exam. Once you've taken these exams, you can have RDMS after your name or RDCS after your name. And that's a great accomplishment to say that you have put in all the work, you got into the classes, passed your classes, took your exams, and now you are free to go out into the world and join all of us in this ultrasound world, which is really challenging, but really fun. And the whole ride there is going to be so worth it. Once you've done all of these five steps, you can apply to any job. Make sure that you have the requirements for that job. Some jobs are going to ask you to be registered in vascular. Some jobs are going to ask you to be registered in OBGYN, especially if you're in an OB outpatient setting. They're going to want you to have that OBGYN registry behind your name. So do that kind of research when you are applying for a job. Once you get notified for the job, they're probably going to interview you. Answer their questions as honestly as you can. Let them know why you chose ultrasound and why you want to be a tech, what you have to bring to the table, and hopefully you get that job and you become a sonographer just like the rest of us. So let's recap the five steps for you to become an ultrasound tech. One, research which type of ultrasound you want to do, echo and vascular or general. Two, 
research the school that has that said path of ultrasound. Three, apply for that school and get into that school, pass your classes. Four, apply for the ultrasound specific program. You got this. And then five, take your board exams. With all of that being said, just want to say good luck on your journey. If you're already in your journey, I'm here if you need help. Don't be afraid to follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and comment below because I love answering your guys' questions. You guys make every day more interesting for me than it already is. I want you guys to stay positive, keep going, never give up, and know it is a rewarding job that is going to give you great benefits and a good life. Be kind to one another, wear your masks, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.